Peace, y'all. What up? This is Frank the Butcher. You're now in tune to the Butcher's Block. I had a chance to catch up my man Jeff Staple on Las Vegas. We had a good conversation about his complex magazine, 50 Most Influential People and in Sneaker History List. Check out what he had to say. You're in tune to the Butcher's Block. I'm your host, Frank the Butcher, and I'm here with my man Jeff Staple. What up? How you doing? What's up, Frank? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Recently, you penned... I'm not gonna say controversial. You know what I'm saying? There was a lot of conversation that 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 opened up because of your list. Um, the 50 most influential sneaker personalities of the last was that of the all time? time of all time. Yeah, all time of all time. Yeah. Um, great list. Thank you. Great list. You omitted yourself for the obvious. You know, you you did your thing and you wanted to fill the list up with other people. We get it. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. As a fan of your work and as someone that follows you, obviously, I'm not by myself uh -huh. when I say that you you know. You're a part of that list. You're a part of that, you know. Maybe. You, sh you, my perspective. Okay. You should have been on the list. Okay. And we appreciate what you've done. So, what number would you have ranked me? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> no, straight up and down. Yeah. Yo, you had to crack the twenties at least. I was gonna say honestly, like twenty-one. I was gonna say that. We're, okay. We're similar. Yeah. And that's I'm just a, I'm just a guppy man in this, you know. Guppy. I'm yeah, but you know what? Your impact, that list was filled with a lot of people that young kids don't even know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A lot yeah. of people that were doing things before these kids were even, before the, the internet made these things accessible, people behind closed doors. You kind of gave the industry insider list. Yeah. You yeah. didn't give like the overtly. The public people. The public yeah. list. Yeah. Which was admirable because a lot of these people deserve. And they never get the shine. And they never get the attention that they You know, the thing is a lot of these companies are like, you know, they're billion dollar corporations that are in business, they keep the lights on because they're selling exactly. white shoes at Models yes. and like BIM yes. and shit. And it, we get a little bit like, you know, starstruck with ourselves because of like the hype piece of the world mm -hmm. where they think like everyone at Nike is caring about tier zero. Everyone at Adidas no. is involved it's with a, Consortium. It's a, it's a sliver of their business. And the reality yeah. is it's one or two people mm -hmm. in a company trying to convince the higher beings, the shareholders, that like, no, we gotta do this. We gotta do this. And people are like, no, fuck that 300 pair bullshit. Like, fill the models order, exactly. you know? Exactly. How fast did you get your first response personally? Text, email, someone you knew? My first call was from Ronnie Feig, and it was a thank you for putting him on the list. And it's very ironic that it was Ronnie, because when I, when I looked through the list, right, that morning, I made the list six months before the list came out because it just takes that long to get the editing done and everything. And when I looked at the list, there was only one name where I thought, damn, he's too low. Only because of what he's done in the past six months has been so much mm -hmm. that like, I was like, you know, I think I put Ronnie at 40 and he really should have been a top 30, top 20 guy, you know? Second call was Clark Kent who gave me like a dissertation on, on like all yeah. my fact, you know, yeah. he was yeah, like, yeah. you got that fact wrong? Let me just tell you like, you know, he was like giving me all yeah, the yeah, fact yeah. checking, you know how Clark is, you know, you know? Clark, so absolutely. he hit me up and you know, he, he, he gave me respect as well. And then he was like on Twitter, he was like saying, what about him? What about that? What about this? What about that? And the third, and I understood where he was coming from because then I, then I re rebuttaled him on Twitter and I said, okay, instead of saying who you should add on, tell me who you would have taken off because it was a top 50 list. Yeah. It wasn't a top yeah. infinity number. So I was like, who would you take off to put these guys that you're mentioning on? And he was like, you're right. I wouldn't really, I couldn't take any of these people off the list, you know? So many people you feel contributed to this, this culture. Yeah. And all they contrib contributions are valid. Right. So how do you measure someone's contribution versus somebody else's? Personal gut, that's it. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, like, honestly, the biggest indicator that this was a personal list is Michael Chang on the list. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think anybody yeah. would put Michael Chang on a top 50 sneakerhead list, but that dude meant so much to me from a sneaker standpoint, and only me, not only me, but like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it meant a lot to me personally. Well, it's like you come from an era where the athlete defined the shoe. Yeah, very you know simple. I mean? That was, that's very a very, simple. very simple. Very simple. Athletes the athlete defined the, the sneaker 
So the <laughs> higher caliber of athlete, the more exciting to watch, the more valuable his shoe was. Yeah, yeah. It's a different time now. Right. Michael Jordan's shoes were valuable because he was the best player of all time. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Another good example of that is I had Bo, uh, I had Bo Jackson and mm -hmm. Charles Barkley on the, on the list, but not Penny. Mm. And a lot of people were like, why point. not Penny? Penny as an athlete versus what you may or may not think of the foam posit are mm -hmm. totally different things. Yes, yes. As an NBA fan in the in the 80s and 90s, Penny was like the pro the next maybe great thing that was you know besieged by injuries and he became yeah. a traveling man but Barkley and how Barkley represented Absolutely. the shoe and the commercial and yeah. I'm not a role model and yeah. the animation commercial like and the on. shoe was aggressive it was beefy it it was an embodiment of him and his yeah, attitude exactly you know and I mean? Barkley is still relevant today absolutely that was another criteria that I had like just because you know you you might have made a little bit of history in the past you got to be somehow relevant continuously you know what I mean if you had to rank a lot of the people on the list were collaborators, people that work with a company that not necessarily work for the company, you okay. know what I mean? Um, you being one of them, yeah. what would you think your crowning shoe would be? The, the one that best defines, like God forbid, you don't make a shoe beyond today. Yeah. What was the shoe that defined what you wanted to project? One is what the public bestowed on me, mm -hmm. which was the SB Pigeon Dunk. That's the shoe that, from a designer standpoint, is actually quite simple, nothing mm -hmm. complicated, um, but the planets aligned to my favor. It was the public that decided that this was gonna be a holy grail. I didn't, I didn't design that shoe saying, how am I gonna cause a riot? How am I gonna make a $2,500 eBay shoe? I just designed a shoe that I thought aesthetically was pleasing, had a good concept, was deep in meaning to me personally, and then the fans just took it all the way, you know? When's the last time you seen a shoe where you was like, fuck? You had nothing to do with it. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> what the fuck? Holy fuck. Like, I wish that was mine. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that one shoe was like, yo, like, god damn, man. Yeah, I would say the most recent one, and it's very recent, is Flyknit. Amazing shoe. Yeah. Amazing shoe. Yeah. Flyknit's so exciting, right? So exciting. And I, you know. I haven't felt this way about a shoe since Presto. Yes, it has that Presto feel. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it has that, not only does it have that Presto feel from a product, like technology standpoint but that but like the aura i want every yeah. color yeah yes yes well thank you jeff i appreciate yeah. your time all right Big it's fan. great great chatting it up with you Frank. absolutely yeah. and um check out the list on complex.com and follow jeff on twitter yeah email me uh, or, or tweet me all your criticisms and comments i want to hear it he has a suggestion box on the outside of his office <laughs> in new york just go by and stick a card in there. Yeah, exactly. You know I'll get right back to you on Twitter. Yeah, comments encouraged. <laughs> Butcher's Block. Frank the Butcher, Jeff Staples. Peace. The Butcher's Block.